Welcome, everyone, to the uh, July uh, Southern Fried DNN User Group meeting. We are uh, here tonight uh, kind of in the middle of the summer in uh, the height of vacation time period where everyone is in and out. I know myself, I was just out in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and was there for half a week. Uh, David Poindexter is out basically today and then out for a week taking his daughter to Disney World. They are going uh, really in the hottest week of the year and maybe one of the more heavily populated weeks of the year, right next to Christmas, I think. Uh, so uh, I hope they have a great time uh, heading out there. Um, myself, I'm looking forward to going to Disney World uh, in February, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, Clint uh, has uh, started a new position with a, a new company, and uh, so um, Clint will be joining us at the end of the meeting if he's able to uh, join in and get online. Otherwise, he had a few um, business meetings that were scheduled uh, at this time period, so he wasn't able to quite be here. So it's, uh, it's me kind of running things by myself. I normally pass things back and forth to people and ask if I've forgotten anything or if there are any good ideas. So, uh, Mike, you're, uh, you're my... You're my go-to on that uh, today, uh, so I will uh, pass those back to you and Charles and everybody else as, uh, as they join online. Um, as we do with every SoFry meeting, uh, this is going to be recorded, so we'll have this up online for everyone. So welcome to, uh, uh, to everyone who's joining us online after the fact. Um, to begin with, we always start off with community events and talk about different things that are going on. Um, one of the things that I have to start off by talking about is uh, talk about DNN Summit. Um, we have seven months until uh, we'll be in, in, uh, in Orlando for DNN Summit uh, to kind of celebrate uh, and, and show that I'm excited about it. I'm wearing a, a kind of a palm tree uh, festive shirt, and I've uh, taped on my DNN Summit uh, version, uh, of the, lo the Florida version of the logo, um, because I really want to get some people thinking about DNN Summit and get excited about it. Um, February the 26th. Uh, 24th through 26th, uh, 2020, um, I could kind of get you a little pumped about it and say, where do you want to be in 2020? That's a big deal. You know, when we were kids, 2020 was the far future. Where do you want to be for 2020? You, you've already got to come up with where you're going to be for, for New Year's. If you haven't already started thinking about that, that's actually going to be a big deal, kind of like where were you in the year 2000 uh, for, for New Year's. But you get a chance to come party, vacation with us, take your, friend, uh, you know, take your family, bring friends to DNN Summit, get DNN information, networking, education, training, but we're going to be in uh, the heart of a vacation city for, uh, for this conference this year. So uh, we've done several things to the setup of DNN Summit to help encourage you to bring your family and get some vacation time in there. Um, we've shifted the days of the week that the convention is going to be so that you could either have a weekend and a day before the conference that you could do uh, a little bit of time there. Do Disney. Go do Harry Potter at Universal. Go do SeaWorld. There's all kinds of things that are happening there. Um, 2020 is also a big year for NASA. You could head out to the, um, to the Space Center and uh, see a bunch of things there. Uh, we might even be organizing something about that for us to go as a group. Uh, but back to the timing of it, um, you'll have a time period before the convention that will be a perfect bumper for it. Same thing afterwards. Um, if you want to just max out, you can do one set of vacation beforehand, convention, and another set of vacation afterwards. Um, that's uh, probably what I'm doing with my, uh, myself and with my crew. Um, uh, we're going to bring everyone down and do something with the crew beforehand, and then I'll do uh, a bit of family stuff uh, after the convention and kind of wrap it all together. Um, there are more things to be excited about, uh, specifically uh, that were released here this week. Uh, to begin with, registration is open. You can now purchase tickets and register and, and commit to uh, coming to DNN Summit, uh, but also pick up your tickets, decide if you're doing training, and, uh, and those types of things. Um, I can say from uh, being involved in other conferences, as well as the past three DNN Summits, that there is a wait on people registering. And it sometimes takes until December before we really start to see people register, and that is rough on us on planning. It's rough on us figuring out our rooms and figuring out 
um, you know, the space we need. Uh, this is a brand new location for us. So we're, there's already a lot of um, predicting and planning uh, for what's happening. The more people we can have registered, the sooner it will really make a difference for us, uh, for us in planning. So uh, registration is open. Uh, the call for speakers is also out. So we, uh, we just opened that up uh, here recently, and we are now inviting you to uh, show us uh, your ideas for, for sessions. Uh, you loved some sessions last year, and you want to do a deep dive version of those? Pitch it. We'd love to hear about it. Uh, you thought, oh, you know, this was a great conference, and I saw these wonderful uh, speakers give on these topics, but I wish XYZ was covered. Pitch it and propose it. Um, if you've got ideas, if you've got information that you want to uh, present, uh, we would love to have that. Every time that we move the location for DNN Summit, we get a new group of people uh, joining in to present and speak, in addition to all of our favorites that we have in there um, you know, every year. Um, so one of the things I encourage you to do is, uh, if you've never spoken and presented before, let's encourage you to do it, and let's help get you... Um, let's see who we have to mute here. Um, we can help get you, um, well, you know, uh, the materials you might need or, or some uh, confidence boosting and training to help you present. Um, it's only an hour uh, for each session, uh, so it's something that's uh, easy for you to organize, and, uh, and I think you'll find it very rewarding. So Call for Speakers is open uh, for DNN Summit, and uh, it's... Uh, Never too soon to start. Um, sorry about that. Never too soon to start uh, talking about it and planning. Um, sponsors. Sponsors is another thing that uh, seems to wait until the end of the year. And the sooner that we have more sponsors uh, stepping in and um, letting us understand what level they're going to be sponsoring at, the more that we are able to plan for and uh, and prepare things for the conference earlier. Uh, so already uh, we have three. Uh, set up as our silver sponsors, we have 10 Pound Gorilla, we have Iowa Computer Gurus, and we have Smith Consulting. Uh, they've been sponsors every year or several years in a row for uh, for DNN Summit, so that's uh, you know no surprise to see those uh, fantastic companies coming in early to become sponsors. We should all thank them, and um, we need to encourage others to participate as well. So if you uh, are normally a sponsor, we'd love for you to sponsor now. If uh, you're in that part of the country or you've never sponsored before, uh, we would love to hear from you and, uh, and get you thinking about uh, being a sponsor at any level uh, because the sooner that we have those coming in, the more we're planning for some different things for, for the conference. Um, okay, so that was Dean and Summit. That is, uh, again, February 2020, so we've got a little while for that. Um, when I next get on to community-related information, for DNN, I normally come to the community blog, and I pick up the latest instance of the newsletter, I take a look at the newest blog posts, and I kind of recap and, and go through those. However, we are very excited about our new community website. So if it hasn't already uh, been uh, driven home, the new home for these kinds of things is at the dnncommunity.org location. So um, even though I would come here in the past, uh, in the future, I'm going to be coming to the dnncommunity.org blogs location. And uh, coming here, I've got all kinds of news and information that's been posted here just recently, certainly from our uh, most recent meeting. Um, but uh, the segment there is to say that, uh, number one, it's really about this community website. Uh, we've uh, talked about it a bit. We've uh, heard from Will Stroll that you know, kind of talked about the uh, need for the community to step in and participate and help build and put content into the community site and take it where you want to take it. Um, it, like everything else that we're running, uh, is really community driven. So uh, we can make this uh, be full of as much fantastic information as we want uh, it to have in it. If there's something missing, you can step in and, uh, and get it started. Um, one of the other uh, articles that was posted recently is the announcement that uh, MVP nominations are open. Um, I have uh, online with us three or four uh, MVPs here right now. Um, MVP program is one that was restarted uh, last year. Clint took that as one of his projects to really shepherd through into a new iteration. And uh, we've had now a year underneath of this program uh, in which we have a structure where there are the current active uh, MVPs, 
but then we have lifetime MVPs, people who have participated for such a long period of time or participated in a heavy way in the past, and they, they've turned themselves into lifetime MVPs. Um, and then we have honorary MVPs uh, that are kind of the um, transition. Um, they are previous MVPs, um, and they might be current MVPs as they phase out um, uh, after they've, you know, not in the current year. Um, and that's where we're heading now. Uh, the voting is open now for you to nominate 2019 MVPs. Um, and really all it takes is you uh, going to the site and filling out a person or a suggestion for people uh, that you would like to uh, nominate. The only difficult thing is that you are you know, recommended to fill in. It's a required field for you to put in the email address for that candidate. If you don't know, don't let that stop you from uh, promoting uh, or suggesting as an MVP somebody that you know has worked hard or has participated in the uh, DNN uh, ecosystem in a, uh, in a contributing major way and you want to suggest that they're an MVP, don't let not knowing their email address stop you. Uh, put in I don't know at I don't know.com or something like that uh, because it's all going to be reviewed by, uh, by humans uh, as it gets uh, aggregated together for voting. Uh, one other note that Clint mentions in his article about uh, the voting is uh, that the current MVPs are already in the system. So if you want to make sure that uh, that uh, Daniel or, or uh, Mike or Mandeep or, or someone make sure that they're in MVP, uh, if they're already a current MVP, you don't have to uh, nominate them again. They're already in the running. Um, but uh, you can think a little bit harder and uh, think of some people who aren't MVPs that you've seen participate and uh, get them into the list. Voting will happen uh, then later this year. Um, so uh, we kind of need those nominations to start coming in now here through, uh, through the end of the summer. Um, the next thing that I'm heading to um, kind of is the edge of the DNA community. This isn't as much about um, – people within the DNA community, as much as this is a message and a reminder to the community participating in and helping others. Um, I think it was the DNN con that was at Palm Beach 2014, maybe 2015, when I was first introduced to the Kiva uh, community, the DNN community at Kiva. Uh, Kiva is a micro-loan, micro-lending um, service that allows you to essentially create charity donations that get loaned out to people who need it, people who need non-traditional loans to help get them um, into a better position or into a better place. And you can use a small amount of money to, as a donation that you put into Kiva, and personally, the way that I use it and, and some of the other uh, members that I know and talk to that, that also use it the same way, um, we use it and think of it as a donation that we put out and it helps someone and then eventually that loan gets paid back and we put it right back out there again. Uh, the point of Kiva for me is an ability to you know, reach out and help somebody in the smallest way that I possibly can, but it can make a big impact uh, for, for other people. So um, I thought I'd share with you the screen here on Kiva that talks about the DNN community and just shows you a little bit about how, you know, how much has been lent and what kind of uh, demographics there are around it. Um, to date, um, $25,000 has been lent over time in the past three years. Um, that's, that's pretty awesome. Uh, that's pretty fantastic, especially when you look at how few um, businesses or, or people are, are involved. Um, but it is spread with loans uh, around the world. Um, if you take a look at it, uh, there are more of them in, um, in South American and in European countries uh, and in Africa than there are in developed nations. Um, the loans are mostly going to female connected loans. Most of the time they're talking about families and family businesses, but um, it's, uh, it's females who've posted uh, the request for loans. Um, and then when you take a look at the spread, it's pretty evenly spread uh, amongst different types of um, different types of industry. Uh, myself, I happen to look for um, people who are doing something similar to what I do, and I look for people who have a small internet cafe, or I look for people who are 
uh, running a web development business and they need equipment. Um, I really, you know, think about those in the way that I bootstrapped my own life and career. Um, and I like thinking that I can contribute and help somebody in the same kind of way. So if you, uh, you know, or if you're thinking about things to do in the DNA community and you don't know how to write code and you're not participating in other uh, heavier lifting items, you can certainly participate with your wallet and even in a small way participate here in the DNA community and impact other people's lives. So uh, think about uh, think about things that you can do to help. Think about the good that you can do. All right. Um, that's about it for DNA community related news and information that I wanted to go through. Um, I said earlier that uh, I normally check with Clint and David to see what other things that I might have forgotten about or, or that I might need to mention. I'll, I'll put that around to, to those online. Um, uh, Mandeep, uh, Daniel, uh, Mike, anything else community related that I've, uh, I've overlooked that I should try and uh, mention or bring up today before we move on? No, I think I, I got nods for no. All right. Well, well, I was just going to say that uh, I'm sure you're going to touch on this, but um, you know, there's yeah. a Vina 9.4 platform. Um, you know, the, it's been in um, the end state, getting ready for a release candidate to come out. Uh, so, you know, I'm under the impression that that should be in the very, you know, uh, very near term, um, imminently. It should be it should be getting released as a release candidate. So. Uh, yeah, you have it up on the screen there now. Uh, I think that's a good collection. Maybe not all of them, uh, but the uh, the features that are going to be inside of uh, 9.4. Um, I'll echo the request that I remember Clint and uh, Mitch uh, suggesting in the past that with these release candidates as they come out, testing is a big issue that uh, they really need help with. And you do not have to um, know what you're looking at in code. You just have to know when something's broken, and you have to be able to put together a good description of what you saw, when you saw it, and what you clicked on that made XYZ happen. Um, if you are able to participate in uh, testing, uh, that is a big way that you can certainly help. And, um, you know, it's something that's easy enough to do if you have the time to do it. Um, additionally, if you're wondering how to install and get set up with a uh, a, a testing version. Um, we did a SoFry meeting two or three meetings ago where um, David Poindexter mentioned that the um, Envy Quick Site had been updated so that it could also pull candidates. And so it, it made it even easier that if you weren't sure you wanted to go through all the hassle of setting something up local, if you can run Envy Quick Site, you could pull a release candidate and install it and get it running, and that helps you and, you know, kind of get over the hump of even installing so that you can get it running. Um, so hopefully, uh, if you are if you haven't seen that, if you'd like to see more about it, just go back to one of the past videos and, uh, and kind of catch that. Well, DNA 9.4 is what we're going to talk about, a specific feature here in just a minute. Um, and uh, I'm going to uh, pass the mic and the presentation screen to Mike Smeltzer. Uh, he has been with us um, for several um, Southern Fried meetings. Um, there was one last year where he uh, came in and uh, most recently presented Shine to us. Uh, Shine is a uh, an interface, a control panel, persona bar interface option that uh, I'm very excited about. I even have a couple of clients that are lined up. As soon as we can get a version of Shine going, I can't wait to show it to them. Um, so we're going to talk about that in, uh, in a few minutes, but uh, before uh, we get into that, uh, as as Mike mentioned, uh, the thing that we're going to talk about first is one of the features out of 9.4 that's, that's interesting. Uh, it's, it's a new feature, and it's a new element, and he's going to show us a little bit about it. I'm hoping for some screens and, uh, and information so I can learn more about it. But uh, we're talking about uh, custom um, module custom action menus. And uh, with that, I'm going to pass it over to Mike and uh, get going. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Should be coming over to you now. Hey. Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Perfect.
Okay, uh, as, as Ryan mentioned, uh, this, this presentation segment is going to talk about uh, customizable module action menus. Uh, it's just going to be a high-level introduction to them, and uh, they are available in Unim Platform 9.4 uh, when it's released. Uh, I'm Mike Smeltzer. I'm, uh, I've been using DNN for, for a decade now, a uh, lifelong developer, and I'm from the east coast of Canada. If you want more information about me, just uh, check my website uh, or follow me on Twitter. So we're going to talk a bit about uh, the basics of what a module action menu is. Um, then we're going to go to a live demo and talk about some considerations that uh, you need to take into account with this new functionality that is uh, coming uh, to module action menus. So we're actually, instead of just going through slides, we're going to jump right in and uh, see these in action and talk about them as, uh, as we're presenting them. So the site right here is just a standard fresh install of uh, 9.3 it, it in my URL bar up there, but it is a 9.4, uh, a nightly build of it. So it doesn't have all the features in 9.4 but uh, it does have the one that we're going to talk about tonight inside of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in. Just bear with us a second. The uh, site was sleeping. Yeah, well, that's, uh, well, the site's spinning up there for the first time. Uh, I'm just going to go over this other tab here and show you on the new DNN Docs website, uh, there's a good write-up on module action menus and, and what they are and, more importantly, how you can use them inside of your modules. Um, I don't know the exact version of DNN platform uh, that they were introduced in, but uh, they've been around for a long time. And um, they're extensible, so developers can add items into them. Uh, usually it's the main gateway if you're following kind of the DNN standard protocol for how to get into the edit interface or the settings interface of modules. Uh, there's absolutely other ways you can do it, but kind of out of the box, this is the, the core way of providing some additional actions or uh, options for users to get into the, into the module action menus. If, you, uh, if I zoom in here, you can see that you know, modules will need to have an iPortable interface, or my apologies, a iActionable interface to interact with the module action menus, uh, or I should say at least with the core module action menus that come with the end of the box. So, there we go. Looks like it's finally woken up. So I'm just going to go ahead and log into this website. Just for anyone who's watching this uh, I've recorded, uh, 9.4 is not this slow. This is running on uh, my local computer here with uh, a bunch of browser tabs and video software. So uh, I think in the, uh, the real world you'll have a better uh, logging experience than that. Um, um, we, we give people leeway. It always, uh, it always happens when you're talking before the meeting starts. This side goes to sleep. It's, it's easy. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how that works, eh? Um, so I'm, I'm logged into DN9 right now. I'm uh, 9.4. I'm in edit mode. And when I hover over a module, we see that module action menu up here in the top right. Um, these, this is core behavior in DNN. Every module that gets added to a page gets at least a couple of these uh, action menus out of the box. Um, you'll get the settings menu and the move menu. So those, those are default behavior. Anything in this edit pencil, this is custom behavior for the module in question. So this is the HTML module. It implements, or sorry, I should say uses the base class of uh, iActionable. And that way you can add, uh, add functions into this. So 
that's pretty cool. Uh, but these haven't been updated uh, in, in quite some time, uh, it's my understanding. There's a few issues on GitHub and some people are solutioning some accessibility updates to them. Um, but, you know, for the most part, they're, 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 they're what they've been for, for years. They work well, um, you know, they work with my mouse. They uh, surprisingly work well with my finger. I'm using the touch screen right now and, and they work with touch. So, you know, they, they get the job done. But, um, you know, if you're building custom solutions on DNN, which is an extensible platform, uh, and not just modules and skins, you can replace large chunks of the platform. The login systems, for instance, uh, you can replace that. You can replace the caching um, functionality. One of the places that I've come across uh, over the last, um, I'd say, year that you can't replace or couldn't replace on an entire site-wide basis is the action menus. So, for instance, when um, you know the persona bar upgraded to from the original control panel to the new persona bar look and feel, the it couldn't bring along its own new action menus with it without changing the entire DNM core itself. So, part of the change that I've introduced in 9.4, which I'll uh, briefly show the code in a minute to, is the ability for what I call a solution developer to be able to replace these action menus on an entire site basis and uh, use a different default a action menu. Currently today, you, you can replace the action menus, but it's on a container by container basis. So you can add code into a container that will let you um, not use the default ones and inject something else. So what we're going to do uh, before I look at the code is just add another module to the page here. Just going to throw an HTML module on the page. And we'll just drop it right above here. And there it is. So we have the standard action menus in DNN. I'm just going to change the container on this module. There we go. So I'm going to change it to this one called Boxed. And this is, I, I've modified this, uh, this container. I'll show you in a minute. But basically it says, hey, I have my own action menus. Don't use the DNN uh, default action menus. And I didn't build the action menus that um, this container is going to use. They're actually ones that come uh, with the platform. It turns out that there's a folder uh, with a couple different types of action menus inside of them. And, and this is one I was able to add into the container. So you can see up here the, the action menu is not here anymore. But down here I have edit, admin, and move. Now it's not much. But it's showing you that, hey, you can override those action menus on a container by container basis. But if I'm building a solution, not just a module on a page, but an entire solution for someone, maybe I want to provide, you know, sort of like a theme where I provide a complete new look and feel for the website. Maybe I want to provide a complete new look and feel uh, with that theme uh, or, or just on its own uh, to that client. So with 9.4, we've added a new portal setting called, um, let's go find it here. A lot of stuff over there. Here we go. So in the portal settings class, there's a new default module action menu setting that will come to 9.4 and you can get access to it uh, from within code. For sites that are being upgraded, um, it defaults to the existing action menus you have today. So there's no interruption service. You can basically opt in and use this functionality or not if you have a solution that takes advantage of it. The change itself um, wasn't very uh, strenuous. It required adding the portal setting in here. It required adding some default code to the portal settings controller. If you're a module developer, you're really familiar with these classes and probably use them quite frequently. So if I search for that, right here is where you can see we're setting up the default. So this path here is the previous path that loads the action and using the core of DNN. In DNN, there is a container class that gets loaded on every single module on the page. So every module on the page is wrapped in a container, and it runs the, you know, the container code is what's responsible, basically, for injecting modules on the pages. 
it's also the code that's responsible for injecting the action menus. So let's go find that one for you. So this class here basically runs with every single module on the page. And if I search for default module action menu, the only change I made in this code here that's highlighted is referencing the portal settings default action menu. So before that, that path that I just showed you, that default path, used to be hard-coded here. We've now made it dy dynamic. So it's not a installable extension, per se, but if you can change the portal setting, just like if you change a portal setting for a default admin theme or a default site theme, it will pull it in and replace uh, that component in the end view. The default action menus are in this path in the source code. Um, so, you know, if you actually go into your uh, instance of DNN and go through the folder structure, you'll find it in the min menus, module actions, module actions on ASCX. So this is the core module action menu. The only thing that a module action menu needs to take advantage of um, the DNN core is you see this one here, it uses an action base class. And that provides some um, wired in um, capabilities so that you know maybe what the container is on the page, uh, things about the skin, that type of thing. The core implementation of this has gone ahead and actually created other properties uh, outside of that. So this is a good spot uh, if you're looking on how to build one of these on your own. You can come in here, copy what has been done today, and then go from there and kind of reverse engineer and uh, modify them to your own needs. One thing I do want to bring up, though, is if you look through here, and we're not going to go through every line by, by detail by any means, but it has things like supports quick settings. Quick settings is some functionality in DNN that let the module developer add a quick view into the into some edit functionality, for instance, instead of loading the entire edit screen or loading the edit screen. So if you're replacing um, or extending um, the module action menu functionality, and you want to do it in such a way that's not a custom solution, but you know maybe as a vendor you want to sell new action menus along with uh, with your theme or, or standalone. Then just like other modules that you choose or how you build them in DNN, you might want to look at what does the core experience offer, and am I going to support that? So for instance. Quick settings, if you don't support that in your extended module action menu, then you could be running into a limitation where some other people's modules might use them, but you didn't um, take advantage of it. Similar to how modules, um, not all of them might use a iPortable interface, so you can import export data or searchable. Um, so it's up to you to choose what you, <laughs> what you use. Um, I think you're, uh, you're muted there, Ryan. I kept pointing down, I said, oh, but they should. Oh, wait, but they should. Yeah, but both of those two things you mentioned should be an absolute must on on modules. They need iPortable and they need iSearchable. Yeah, I, I, I agree. There's a, there's a standard set of functionality, and, um, you know, you, you should implement these things or, or provide uh, safeguards um, for, for those instances that you don't. Um, that, there's been no more frustration for me than, installing a module on a site and, oh, it doesn't work with the rest of my site search, for instance, or something like that. So, um, the, the iPortable has always been a thing that, you know, um, you might think about some modules where they don't need to export content or they don't need to export much, um, but settings. If you have settings in a module and you have an ability to export those settings so that in another setup of the same module you don't have to click and set everything, you can just import those settings again. Um, I think if you think about it, almost any module can at least have something that's worth exporting for import again. So I've, I've always had that as a, uh, a thing that I like to see in modules. Cool. Even, even just copying the module in the same site so needs that mm -hmm. interface. Yes, yeah. it does, yeah. yeah. So as we, as we scroll through here, um, you know, there's, there's a couple hundred lines of code to make that basically custom control work as module action menu. There is, if we look at the, uh, the view portion of the core one, not a whole lot of code here. Um, there's a panel for the quick settings. 
There's some JavaScript. There's a custom um, jQuery plugin that was built, I believe, uh, for the DNA module actions. You can see here that they're using some server-side code to pass some data into that JavaScript object. We're going to touch on this and this a little bit later uh, in the demonstration. But this code that you're seeing here, you know, another 150 lines of code, and then we have the JavaScript file which has the plugin itself. I'm not going to go through all the lines here, but basically it's implementing the, the move down functionality, um, move panes, that type of thing. Another couple hundred lines of JavaScript here. So while the JavaScript will only get loaded once, all of this code is running every single module on the page uh, in DNN. If you um, get into a situation where you may be on a page that has like 100 modules, uh, I've seen some with uh, lots of different uh, dynamic capabilities. Works great in view mode, but in edit mode, their, their interface is frozen for a couple seconds because you're processing all this JavaScript. And you're doing that because if we look at the action menus here, these are being positioned with JavaScript. So you'll notice sometimes when the page loads, they're not there and then they come flying in. It's because after the fact, they're running code, client-side code, to tell them where to go. Um, they're inside of this drag and drop bar. Now, unbeknownst to me originally, uh, I thought this was all one and the same thing, but the drag and drop functionality is implemented outside the action menus. So just kind of from a UI perspective, we're putting the action menus on top of that bar, but they're not related uh, to each other. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what we can do with this new setting. So you can't access it from code. I'm just going to insert it into the database here, just for demonstration purposes. And all I'm basically doing is changing that path I showed you to a different path. Now, because it's a portal setting, uh, that means that those things are cached. So we need to recycle the app pool to uh, load in the new data, or you can also do that from within the site as well. Uh, but this is the uh, quickest way for me to do it. Okay. And I'm just going to reload this page. Should just take a moment. Well, that's loading up. Uh, what I'm going to show you now is just a basic example of a bare bones action menu. So as you can see here in my notepad screen, I have an ASCX control, use a C sharp, but nothing else. So with doing this, um, I'm basically just going to show you that you can completely remove those action menus. So this control is getting loaded, but there's nothing in it. Um, so if you for some use case, didn't want to have any type of action menu, you could provide sort of a, an empty container, we'll say. I'm just going to shut down some of these, uh, these tabs here. <laughs> there we go, it's picked up now. All right, so. Here we see the original module that we used that different container on with the custom controls. Still has them. But this module here, there's, there's no action menu at all. So, okay, that's cool. Gets us part way there. Um, but maybe we want to actually build a, a custom action menu. So what I've done is I have some sample code here. I'm just going to paste this in. And uh, this is very rudimentary. But it's going to show you how um, you can take advantage of the core behavior. So this uh, code behind file up here, just any random code behind file that you've built, but it has that um, that I uh, or that action base class. So it lets us have access to things like this variable called actions, which dynamically pulls all the actions that are loaded by a module vendor, uh, for instance. 
Whereas that previous example I just showed didn't take advantage of that. So that's kind of one of those considerations uh, that if you're going to build these things, then you probably, if you're doing it in a um, distrib distributable way, things you should take advantage of. So here's a basic for loop that loops through the, the actions and then loops through the child actions, which I'll show you in just a moment here. So that should just take a moment. All right. So as I mentioned, there's actions and child actions. The, the top parent level are going to be edit and min and move drop down menus. And then below those, we have the ones that this module uh, registered, edit content, my work, the admin, and then the move as well. Um, so obviously, I don't think you'd want to ship this uh, <laughs> looking like this to somebody. It shows you um, a very quick and dirty implementation of a custom module action menu across the entire website. Uh, these actually do work. Um, if I click on this, it should work. What does refresh do? That uh, just, uh, I haven't dug into it deep down, um, but you'll see that in the drop down menu. I'm pretty sure um, that there's like an update panel and it just kind of reloads that one module, is, is my guess. Re reloads the element, it's, yeah. No, it yeah. clears the module cache. Mod oh, it does it? Oh, okay. If you have module caching level, that clears it. Okay, it. there you go. So probably a, a bit of a, a terminology. It, so. So page caching, if you have page caching on, that's page caching level. No. This is module caching, module caching level, that one item. Yes. Nice. Yeah, oh, you can nice. cache the output of a module for X minutes, and that clears yes. it and makes the module code run again. Yeah, we, we, uh, we used to have that more frequently with older RSS-related modules, where you'd cache what came in, and if you wanted to, to drop it and pick up again, you could force it. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Okay. Um, so yeah, that, this is just the core stuff that comes out of the box, and uh, and that that's it. That just shows you what you can do there, and um, you know this is uh, not meant to be shippable or anything like that. But hey, if you want to look at maybe replacing the core action menus, whether it's from a community contribution with a platform level, or as a commercial vendor, or as a custom implementation. You now have the ability to do so in a very quick and easy way to get going. Change that setting, and uh, you can do whatever you want. Um, this could also be great for you know doing things like A/B testing in the platform. Um, there's a few, I believe, on GitHub issues that have some proposals in them um, for how to make these things more touch-friendly, uh, accessible, maybe even look different, collapse into one button, that type of thing. Well, with this type of functionality, you know. Be as I mentioned earlier, be, because there's so much code and so many features in VNN, from a core perspective level, you have to support that stuff or you, you have to deprecate it. Um, so I can understand why these haven't changed, you know, uh, with, with a faster cadence. But, um, you know, using this functionality, maybe you could trial uh, a new core action menu, for instance, and then that way work with the bugs without impeding uh, production or something along those lines. Now, if I understand correctly, you get your, your list of actions, so you could add another uh, first level menu in there if you needed more than admin and edit and move. You could do whatever you want. So yeah. uh, ab absolutely, I could just right here in, the, in, in this example, throw in another list item, and uh, there we go. Daniel's option it is. I'm not going to do anything, obviously, but it would show up, yeah. But, uh, yeah, exactly. Or you could do things like, you know what, I actually don't like and never used the develop menu. Most things, you know, uh, yeah. I don't use the menu. So you could remove that stuff, too, and then stop cluttering the interface uh, in some instances as well, if you want. So from a... Mm, use it or provide for the, the masses, theme developers can can and have always been able to uh, do replacements and, and variations on this within containers. Correct. Yes. But here, you could conceive of somebody creating a replacement action menu, I don't know, installer, 
and that would perform the few updates needed to then make a replacement set of, of action menus uh, for your whole DNN instance. So it would be a way to improve your overall um, your overall accessibility. You mentioned touch. Um, I think that's a big deal. Those icons yeah. are a certain size. Um, you could have it that uh, maybe if you are mobile, it detects and makes bigger versions of those or, or more touch-friendly versions of those. Um, I, I absolutely... Keyboard friendly. Oh, absolutely. Um, I was going to say I absolutely dislike the the phrase, the use of the word hamburger menu to sure. describe what has become now permanently known as the hamburger menu. I, I cringed the first time I heard it, and then it stuck apparently, uh, and so everyone says it. But anyways, a hamburger menu style version of that for um, for touch would be a, would be an improvement somebody could create, but one that's unique or strange enough that you wouldn't want it in the core. So you don't want it as an improvement of permanent change to DNN, but some person's sites and the thing they need, they want it customized. Very cool. And if I understand correctly what you did now, uh, they're not positioned anymore by JavaScript. That That is uh, contained so that example, within that pane, right? Exactly. In, in that example, it's just injecting that HTML and there's no JavaScript. There was no JavaScript in that at all. Um, obviously, you could add some in, do it differently, but uh, it gives you the capabilities there to to really do whatever you want uh, from, from building a web page. Mm. All right, so that's all I have for the uh, the module action menus. Uh, Very nice. You, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, thank you, Mike. Before we leave, um, we've all kind of been talking about it, but uh, with, with those uh, online, any questions about it and what we've what we've kind of seen here with it? I think we were I think we were chiming in as we had thoughts or had questions. Um, so thank you very much, Mike. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, equal uh, equal interest. Uh, this was uh, interesting to me, and I will have it bounce around in my head for a little while. Um, but uh, also equally interesting uh, is to get another uh, sneak peek at uh, where you are with with Shine. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, Shine is something that we had you talk with us about probably November or so last year uh, to kind of give us some ideas and, and uh, introductions. I seem to remember you giving us a, a brief sneak peek or a brief preview, and um, everyone in the room gasped or, or jumped <laughs> back when you showed us like one or two key features, and everyone went, whoa, those are fantastic. Um, so uh, I'm really glad to have you uh, show us a little bit about what uh, – where you've brought it to and uh, what we might expect. Um, and, of course, we're going to talk to you about um, about timelines. So you'll have to think hard about your answers here uh, <laughs> in a few minutes. We're going to press you for those. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, uh, yeah, as Ryan mentioned, so this uh, next segment we're going to talk about Shine. Uh, it's a pre-release sneak preview. For those of you who don't know what Shine is, it's a uh, effectively it's going to be a commercial premium extension that will transform your existing DNN platform websites. Uh, we'll call it the administration Chrome. Um, so the, the core control panel, the persona bar interface with a new default control panel. And that is for existing DNN websites and also for net new websites as well. As mentioned earlier, uh, yeah, I'm Mike Smelter from the East Coast of Canada. If you want more information about me, just go to my website or follow me on Twitter. So before we get started, we're going to kind of do what we just did a few minutes ago where the majority of this is going to be inside of uh, the app and talking about it while we're doing things. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, what is Shine? So Shine is a commercial premium or a premium commercial module uh, that's not released yet, but has been in um, development and various, various releases, uh, but not general availability release over the past three years. It uh, started as an idea out of the frustration of my clients, uh, not the same clients. Every, every client I went to was you know, liked DNN, loved the power, but found that the, the default interface was um, leaving a bit to be desired in some cases or wasn't friendly enough to be, to, to be useful to them. Now, some of these types of comments come down to the, the implementation in question. You could have the best platform in the world, 
but if you don't do a, a strong implementation to your clients or uh, to the business problems to solve the business problem properly, you know, regardless of what platform it is, it's not going to be a great implementation. But I was finding even on really you know slick websites that you know it, it wasn't moving at a level that uh, customers or general users are, are used to with with other apps. So you look at your iPhone or your Android, um, big names, uh, big named applications are coming out with more modern functionality, different design uh, methodologies, you know, making things look native on an Android phone uh, with PWAs, for instance. You know, there's, there's a lot of things out there in the tech world that have changed the last few years, but the core default experience um, was not necessarily progressing with those in some cases. Still solves the need greatly and has a lot of great functionality, but you know a different kind of target market, I think. So we started building Shine a few years ago, and uh, we've released in various different stages in, in soft betas with uh, select groups of customers. We've done beta testing, we've done user research uh, openly on, online, um, on, on uh, conversations similar to this one, but also on one-on-ones and that type of thing. So what we've done is basically taken the last couple of years of data and um, experiments that have been proven and validated, and in a lot of cases some have been invalidated as well and removed them, and got to a point now where we're pretty comfortable with um, the progress. We've been on production now with about half a dozen websites for a few months, and day to day working through the, the issues that people come up with so that we can, uh, in the very near future, have a version one kind of general availability release. So let's go ahead and, actually I should have had this slide up when I was talking there. <laughs> um, it, uh, as I mentioned earlier, for existing and new websites. So we're supporting DNN 7.4 and up, all the way up to version 9.4 currently. The way um, DNN has been built, you know, there's been a lot of breaking changes over the last few versions for people, for sure, but the core implementation of .NET Nuke, the DNM platform itself, has changed very little over the years. Yes, there's been bug fixes, new features, security improvements, performance improvements, but the methodology of modules and skins and themes, these things have been pretty static, and, and for good reason, and they're the pretty core of the product. So we're able to build this product in a way that there's one code base that spans those versions, um, because the things that have been removed behind the scenes, we're not, we weren't using and taking advantage of. So this puts us in a good spot where not only can we upgrade existing websites that, you know, I don't, I don't like saying this, but, but it's true. You know, there are people, there are companies that are stuck, whether it's DNN or other platforms, stuck on versions and, you know, could get off of them, but the cost to do so is, is enormous in some of these cases that it far outweighs you know, the, the benefit. And yes, you're, you're giving up security and performance knowingly, but, um, you know, there are things you can do to work around that, patches you can put in place. And, uh, you know, for some use cases, it, it makes absolute sense. Uh, I've worked on some upgrade projects that have been hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, these, these are um, not they've been all good me, mind you. <laughs> Wish it did. But uh, these have been, you know, situations where, Okay, maybe you just want, you like what you have today, you like the way it works, but you just want to, you want to modernize it. So when you have new people come in, it just it looks fresh, it looks, it looks more like a modern application would look in 2020 when I go download it from an app store. There's a focus in Shine on not necessarily competing on feature spec and functionality. How many features can I stuff into this thing? Now, I mentioned that we validated and invalidated a lot of different features over the last few years. And that's kind of the approach we were taking, was how much stuff can I cram into this solution? And you end, you end up getting into you know, a lot of scope creep and going down lots of different rabbit holes. So we said, you know, what were those kind of guiding principles originally when we started this project? Go back to the basics and really focus on building a modern application that lets people edit their website regardless of device form factor. So on my Surface Pro 4 right now, whether I want to use my mouse, keyboard, the touch screen, or my cell phone, this product can scale with your needs. Doing something that's called inclusive design. So not just responsive, not just caring about the, the device form factor, but 
building a website interface for people that have vision issues. Our lead tester on this product has an incurable degenerative eye disease. She's not blind yet, but she will be one day probably. So far, you know, her vision is narrowed. She can't see the size of the screen, even on a small device, because she has to get so close to it to see it. She's colorblind. Different shades of gray blur into each other. Other colors do as well. Or sometimes, colors may look like a different color. Um, you know, there's examples, that I, I don't know the exact colors off the top of my head, but potentially, you know, if we're using a certain error color, well, maybe they see that color differently. So maybe we need some something else to, to help that user out. Maybe they can't use a mouse. Maybe they want, you know, someone mentioned earlier with module action, module action menus, maybe they want to use a keyboard to, to navigate through. You know, there's lots of different modalities. Uh, I, I myself, I did this a lot, not just in this product, but just using my computer daily. I've got my portable mouse, which I just pressed a button on, um, <laughs> on, the, on the table. And I've got my left hand on the side of my Surface Pro, which if you're not familiar with Surface Pro, it's a touch screen. So I usually flick through my web pages with my left hand. Or I tap on things sometimes, and then if there's a task that requires you know, more, uh, more control, I move my mouse. So I kind of multitask on one device. And I and agree I with you that, that accessibility is not only for disabilities. I mean, every no, time no, no, I can no, avoid no. using the mouse, I do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Accessibility is not just uh, colors uh, and things like that. It's not just using um, the mouse. It's, you know, or putting alt tags on images. Those are absolutely fundamental portions of it, but it could be, um, you know, having proper words on things for screen readers. Um, you know, making sure, I, I don't know all the examples off the top of my head, but there's HTML tags you can use to tell a user of a screen reader that, hey, okay, you know, you're at the top of the page, there's a bunch of stuff in between here, you just want to get to the content, so skip over the navigation and go right to the page. Yep. Um, jump to body or jump to main. Yeah, there's, there's video, right? Video with transcription. Um, there's, there's lots of different, there's PDFs. They're not part of your website, but yes, they are. If they serve from your website, someone's going to get that. Those need to be accessible too in a lot of cases. So, you know, um, to point handle, absolutely. Accessibility is a huge topic. And uh, I, I'm not bringing up um, every single aspect of it by any means, that's for sure. And just before we get into the demo here, this is an evolving product. What I mean by that is when version one comes out in the very near future, no, that is not the end. That is just the beginning of what this product is. And, you know, we've been, as I mentioned, in production with limited customers already. We have done lots of testing and lots of uh, focus groups with one-on-one -on -one and multiple people. And we're learning constantly. And as the first release of this product comes out, we're probably going to learn a whole lot more, which we haven't found yet. And the point of shine is not going to be a one, two-year type of release, uh, a year thing. It's going to be a quick cadence, you know, maybe potentially a release a month, every couple of weeks, um, you know, depending on our sprint ball. So we're going to do well, that. To, to ask you a question about that, um, you, you mentioned that it's an evolving product and that you're going to keep rolling out things. It's not as though you're, you're just releasing this. You've been using this for multiple years now, and you've been doing that. You've been constantly improving it and constantly adding to it. Exactly. So it's almost as though your release here is really year two of this whole thing, and you've been constantly evolving all the way along. So we're just picking up to now be able to see this when it gets released and participate, but you've been doing this for a while already with constant evolution. I've been doing this for, for a few years now with uh, as anyone who's built a startup uh, company and, a, and product before, you know, many hills and valleys. Um, you know, there's been, um, I, I started this uh, three, three years ago, so Dean and Seven Days, then you know, a persona, a persona bar that comes out that really shook things up for me. It's like, oh, geez, okay, there's something else here. And we've had a few attempts. Um, for, and I think some of them are still in use today for open source control panels that are on GitHub. Um, but you know, this is, a, this is a, for a different target market than some of those tools. And uh, we'll, we'll get into that right now, actually. So let's uh, let's jump in here. 
So we're probably going to run into a situation here where the site is falling asleep again. <laughs> so just bear with me for a sec. Uh, while, that, while that's loading, I just want to mention, you know, this is not going to be going through every single screen and feature of the product. We're going to touch on uh, some of the differentiating, differentiating features um, that, that we have. And it's meant to be a, a casual conversation. So, yes, it is a product, but if you're curious about how something was done along the way uh, or have any questions, you know, just, just bring them up. It's kind of a behind-the-scenes sneak preview as to what's coming. So uh, we're on the same site again. Um, what I've done is I've already installed Shine here, so we don't have to go through the install cycle. But to install it, just like any extension, take the zip package, go to the ins installer, install it, and behind the scenes it will do the work of the next time you log in, replacing the, uh, either the core control panel, the persona bar, or if you have another option in use, with, with Shine. So let's go ahead here and log into the same site. So we hit login. So this uh, whole login experience is the exact same that we have today. If you're using a different login provider, it will continue to work as is. Um, so whatever your gateway is into your site, it will continue to be used. Now, I'll explain this, this right now. Actually, this wasn't supposed to happen. So here, I'll just close this and explain to you uh, what's supposed to happen for this demo. So you should have just seen this. And uh, what you just saw is a um, unfinished feature, which I'll, which I'll touch on. But when you log into your DNN website, currently what we just saw in the persona bar a few minutes ago is you log in with a user account that has edit privileges. Your persona bar is added to every page on the site. I just logged in here and, uh, you know, just disregard that bug there for a few moments. I log in here and with Shine, you don't see anything. You see your website with no admin Chrome whatsoever. So, um, dare I say this, similar to WordPress, how if you want to get into the administration portion of your website, you go to WP Admin and you get a whole administration control panel over here. If you navigate through your site, you do have a little bar at the top on WordPress that says you that you can get there. Um, so it's a similar methodology where I log into this website and I can now go through it and test it and use it just like any of my customers would. And maybe maybe I am a customer and use the same account or something, or I use this website. I don't have my administrative Chrome getting in the way. So how do we get that administrative control experience up? Well, there's a few ways. What we normally do here is just type in edit site on Shine. So this gives you a dedicated URL, which you could bookmark, for instance, and give it to a client. And without even logging in, if they went here first, this would take you to your login page and bring you right back. So we've just logged in. And because this is the first time this user has used Shine, they are getting a, a, a getting started welcome screen. I okay, preface uh, this presentation with we are still uh, two to three sprint release cycles out from having a completed version one. So you're going to see some spots such as this screen where there's a little bit of UI tidy up required. But I think uh, as far as the pr presentation uh, goes on, you'll, you'll get the, the gist of where we're going. So I'm just going to go through here and agree to the cookie and privacy policy and accept the default um, options and continue. So now as a user, that screen should never come up for me again unless um, as a developer we change our policies and require someone to, to see that again. But right away, you know, we're seeing some similarities and differences between previous control panels and Shine. Your top bar is very reminiscent, reminiscent of Demon 7 and 8, so the exact same height, for instance. That bar gives us access to global functionality on this site. So things like uploading a file or creating a page or logging in with my user account in here. The gray bar is what we're calling the page bar, which would be the equivalent to persona bar's edit bar. We're giving you page level uh, actions and information that are applicable to this page only. And then down below here we have your page um, on, on your website. There's a couple um, things you're going to notice right now. 
this website is, is, is not full screen in, in the same size, in, in, in the same aspect as Persona Bar. And everything is rendering uh, perfectly, as you saw. There's no overlapping or uh, margins required at the top of the page to make uh, things as a, as, a, as, a, as a theme developer or just a, a website admin. Nothing I have to do extra to make this look and fit. In this model, let, let me just back up a step here. In the original DNN default model, every page has the control panel injected into it. So the content page is the container, is the parent, and the persona bar or the core control panel or any other control panel that follows kind of the, the core methodology, they're injected into that content page and they're the child. So they don't have full control over their environment. In this example, Shine is actually running as its own standalone app. And the content pages are loading up inside the Shine. So that gives us the ability to have full control, uh, prevent any types of overlapping, any conflicts with CSS and uh, JavaScript. Now, the ProSomer did do uh, some great work there uh, to help mitigate against uh, client CSS by loading the persona bar in an iframe. But it's still inside of someone else's solution. It is not the, the encompassing solution. Whereas Shine, it is the encompassing solution, and it loads the content page in an iframe instead of loading itself in an iframe. So early on in our prototyping of this, we were calling this inside out mode because uh, it's kind of doing the reverse of what DNN does. Um, but it's all doing this with, you know, there's no core modifications or anything like that. We're not just using the default control panel way of building stuff, but we're also picking up some of the other building blocks that the platform has for us in order to make this happen. Um, before I touch on specific functionality in Shine, one of the common uh, questions we get is, okay, you, you've mentioned this works on 7.4 and 9. How does this work with the existing solutions? So before I go into any menu options, I'm just going to click in here on this one here. And this, is, this gives us some more options. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's some UI tweaks. So we don't have uh, all the icons and things of like that in place. But this is pretty, uh, it's, it's pretty future complete. You know, you could say that uh, minus a few bugs and some polish here and there, we're 95% we're feature complete. And uh, what you're seeing in this demo is, is pretty much what version one's going to have with, you know, the missing icons added and some bug fixes and that type of thing. But we have admin and host page functionality. So I'm on DNA 9, but it does have admin pages by default. And there they are. They come with it. Same thing with the host menu. So if you have them carried over from your upgrades in DNA 7 and 8, you can still access those today. If you don't have those pages, these options disappear. And in 7 and 8, it's the opposite. Open persona bar disappears. So I'm just going to do a quick demonstration of this. If you're on DNA 9 and up, you get that option. When I click it, a new tab opens, and I get that exact same persona bar experience that I was getting earlier. Thank you. <laughs> um, from our use, and you know, there's always going to be use cases that's different, but from our use, a lot of the tools that uh, people rerun into use for content editing don't integrate with the persona bar. They're usually modules on a page. And a lot of the options in the persona bar are 100% required, 100% to set up websites, add a role, that type of thing. But they're not necessarily things we're doing on a daily basis. So the intent of Shine is to, as I mentioned earlier, to focus on tasks that are being done on a daily basis. The immediate experience when you log in, the creation of pages, adding modules to a page, things that regardless of your use case, or quite frankly, regardless of what platform you're on, what website platform you're on, these are commonalities amongst all of them. Creating pages, creating files, adding content, changing page metadata, that type of thing. So we're trying to solve um, or improve, I should say, you know, that aspect of uh, website editing. Not necessarily coming into here and having a new admin model, for instance. So as I mentioned earlier, there's different target markets. And the persona bar of the box, um, these types of settings are for a certain target market, a certain type of user. Yes, there are some solutions I'm sure take advantage of persona bar. Um, but at least to this point, there hasn't been a huge uptake uh, that I've seen. Um, so for version one, we're 
going with the assumption that the majority of our users are going to be in this view, and when you need to get into the site settings for something, we still give you the ability. If you have a custom solution, we still give you access to it. Now, this only exists in this tab. Once I navigate to another page or close the tab, the persona bar is gone, leaving me with shine in the other window. Um, so that shows you kind of the functionality um, compatibility that we're doing with 7, 8, and 9, regardless of your existing uh, control panel um, selection. Before uh, we get in a little further, I'm now going to demonstrate to you uh, what type of responsive uh, design we're doing. I'm not going to go through every instance, but you know something for me, and this doesn't mean, hey, you can edit this on your cell phone. Yes, this works on your cell phone. But there's a lot of times where I like to have my windows on my desktop side by side. So if we do that, right, now I've got a control panel that still goes with the page. And I just grabbed the wrong window there. There we go. Uh, so grab this and can shrink it down further. And Ryan's favorite hamburger menu appears. Uh, so the options spill over into it. We'll notice things like the device preview toggle. Uh, we haven't touched on it, but it disappeared in this screen because it's not really applicable or practical, I should say. And as we come back, some options uh, come up. So Shine does, doesn't do responsive on its control bar. Every screen in Shine is responsive. Uh, we're just going to give you an example of, of this part for now. We want to focus on the gray bar for now. This is the page bar. Because as I mentioned earlier, Shine is its own standalone app. If I'm the persona bar and want to switch or, or any other solution that's inside the page and want to switch between view and edit mode, it would refresh the entire page. But with Shine, as you can tell, Shine didn't reload. Just the page itself did. So we're saving uh, from a performance perspective. We're saving trips to the server to re-download my min experience every time. Uh, we're also enabling the capability uh, in the future for this, where this could potentially be an installable app on your machine now, because you can download the control panel and it's standalone. Um, so as we toggle back and forth, you can see that the animation on the tabs goes, and it's just a nice fluid experience without refreshing the entire page. On the far right here, this uh, inside out mode, this standalone app mode, lets us do things like quickly change the device preview. So we're in desktop to start, but I want to see if this web page looks like a mobile. I just press that and quickly the app scales down to a mobile phone view. Or if I want to do a tablet, for instance, it goes into a tablet view and goes into a desktop view. This is great for users who aren't developers, who are not going to open up their F12 developer tools and play with an emulator. They want to quickly see what their site looks like. And we can do that right from here. I'll, uh, I'll chime in on that to say that uh, that's the perfect use case you described. Us developers, we switch into that all the time out of what's built into whatever browser we're using. But when you have someone who's a content editor and you want to explain to them, the best thing they normally do is resize their windows, and that's not always an accurate sense of mobile sizes and tablet sizes. So this gives them a button they can press, which is a big difference. Exactly. There is actually uh, part of this uh, part of this um, implementation. I, I found out a lot of information with the platform. There is a mobile preview API built into the platform with dozens of different device combos, and you can see it in the database. And it had, holds things for device resolution, device name, size, that type of thing. And in previous versions of DNN, uh, and I think probably in Evoke they may still have this. And I'm not sure if it ta taps into the core functionality or not but they have all other similar solutions for doing this. The challenge though um, that I think many solutions might have is because you know if you're injected into a content page, well, the page owns you. You can't really dynamically shrink that page down and control around it versus in this type of uh, design where we own everything and we're able to shrink the page and uh, not, you know, throw up a pop-up that loads the page again, and uh, you know, just, just a nice, seamless, fluid experience. While we're talking about uh, the page bar here, this gives us quick access to the page settings menu, which I'm not going to go into for now. Uh, we'll get that to a moment. And then we have a settings menu with some more options here. 
to get into the module of the cycle bin. So this is some functionality we had from the start where uh, I'm not going to demonstrate at the moment, but if you delete a module from the page, you can go right in here and, and add it back to the page instead of going to a central uh, recycle bin. It's in context on the page that you've deleted. And some quick toggles for making the page private, uh, adding it, removing from the navigation, or just deleting it. While we're still on there, I'm actually just going to do, if you see here now, the view and edit are highlighting. No, I'm not moving my mouse. I'm on the keyboard, so I can tab through these things, okay. and I can go into the settings menus. Everything can be used on different uh, devices or different uh, input methods, I should say. And the shape of them, the size of them, everything is touch friendly. I'm using my finger right now to do this. Um, so. There's a couple of different uh, use cases there for some of that inclusive design I mentioned. Okay, I'm going to go back into edit mode here. And this functionality is one of the features that, uh, that we've had for quite some time. In the persona bar that you saw earlier, or in, in other DMN implementations, to add modules to the page, you open up a module screen that gives you a collection of, of your modules, and you drag and drop it into the different content panes. And uh, this is a good example down here to show you those different content panes. If those plus icons weren't there, then I would drag and drop the module. But what we found for, not, not only for a touch screen uh, implementation, but just general information purposes, when you're in the edit mode, we're injecting these add buttons into every single content pane dynamically. So it doesn't matter what skin you have, it doesn't matter what custom modifications you have, every content pane has its own button. If you run into a situation like here where we have a content pane that has modules in it, we're adding the module or the, uh, the add button not just into the pane once, but above and below every module. So right away you get a good visual indication of the only places on a page you can add a block of content uh, or, or a module, I should say. So I'm just going to go ahead and click over here, and you can see a screen load up with all of the modules that um, my user account has access to. You can share an existing module or add a new one. We've got a search functionality here. It's quite quick. And also, um, in some previous control panels, and this has been a request uh, from this show, actually, um, from this meetup group uh, a little over a year ago, some previous control panels let you do default uh, or, or set up some basic information before putting on the page. One of my biggest complaints is going to a website that I've never used before, it's been around a long time, that had hundreds or thousands of pages, modules deleted over years, not a whole lot of maintenance, so recycle bins aren't emptied, uh, things are hidden, and people have added modules to pages, but not given it a name. So it makes it really hard when you see 500 HTML modules in the garbage can or recycle bin, but no names on it. So while it's optional in DNN, we're giving it to you optional here, but we're trying to entice you by you know, focusing <laughs> the, the cursor in the text box, you know, making it super simple for anyone just to, to type in what this is. So this could be you know, the Southern Pride's promo banner. It's not, July, it's not August, it's July 2019. Right? Something meaningful uh, so that when someone comes back here, whether it's a new employee, or someone that, if you're like myself, I do so much stuff I can't remember what I did yesterday, I can now easily, quickly find what I'm after. We're just going to cancel this for now, though. So, very similar, has all the same functionality as today, just a different way of adding it to a page, a different user experience, a different workflow. We mentioned the page settings. Um, so we're actually going to touch upon that, but we're going to touch upon it through the page and redirect manager. So there are some icons that are going to be changing, as I mentioned. On the top bar here, we have manage pages and redirects. This opens up a context menu, so we can quickly create a page or create a redirect, uh, or a vanity URL, uh, as it's also known in some circles, or we can manage all the pages and redirects. So let's go in here. And we have a mobile window that loads up. Um, if you're familiar with Shine from previous demonstrations, part of our feedback and part of our, our validation 
was originally we had a small window slide out from the left hand side of the screen maybe took up 30 percent of the real estate but our users and uh, hopefully uh, potential users in the future uh, that give us feedback they told us you know we want more screen real estate we want to see everything in front of us when we are modifying our site we don't want to be confined to something inside of a mobile screen so hence the responsive design on a desktop, you get a nice big view here of all your pages and redirects in a tree view format. Uh, the tree view is a custom implementation that lets us quickly and easily see all of the pages on our site or redirects. Um, we can see that the home page is up here. Uh, we can see that these have child pages, just in the, in the way the tree view is structured. Uh, everything you see here, it's, it's quite zippy. Um, everything is being loaded real time. Uh, so as I expand these trees, that's pulling down those pages so it keeps um, you know if you're on a data on mobile data and you want to quickly get in there and oh geez you know I need to create a redirect or, or delete something you can do that without downloading tons of data uh, everything as you progress and click on things will pull it down dynamically for you quick access to uh, the page itself so one of my uh, favorite things to do just to get places is I open up the redirect manager, find the page I'm after, because not every page is going to be in your navigation. Um, and I just click it, and it will take me right in to that page and load in context. Just like I mentioned before, there's no refreshing of the entire app. We just basically swap out the current page and, and pull that one in. Then go back in here, and uh, you're not going to see the mouse for a moment, because I'm using my finger. Right? I'm using my finger to do the exact same thing I just did and really easy to do, no fumbling around, the hit targets are nice and big and, and work in, in either input method. You'll notice that every uh, page also has a more page options menu. So the one that we just showed up here on the page bar is the same options showing up in here as well. So I can also quickly get into the page settings, quickly get into a module recycled in for a page or you know, delete it, make it private, that type of thing, directly from this view. Part of uh, how I mentioned earlier, you know, we're trying to not just, we're not just trying to rebuild a, a new control panel, we're trying to use um, some modern UI elements, make it seem more native. So something with these context menus, if I open near the top of the list, just like Windows would, the menu goes down. If I pick something at the bottom of the list, it goes up. So I don't get into situations where I might open up a, a menu that's at the bottom of a list and half of it gets cut off uh, or at the side of the screen. You know, it knows its position, so it is dynamically moving itself so that you can see it regardless of the size of the screen. Um, on the right-hand side here, we have some icons that are just giving some quick information. And these are some of the icons that are going to be updated, but we can see this page is locked. And we can see that this page is hidden from the navigation. Uh, we chose these uh, icons for the navigation icons because in um, previous versions of VNN, that is the icon that was used. Um, it's not crazy intuitive to me, um, so we are going to look at replacing that with something else uh, for version 1. The top of the screen here, we've got the ability to create a page or a redirect. So just like you could for the main toolbar, if you're in the experience, you should be able to do it as well. And similar to the module recycle bin, we have a page recycle bin that tells us how many pages are in it at the current time. And the ability to close the, the window as well. So we're just going to show you what this would look like in a mobile use case. Right? I still have a very similar experience. It just scales down, hides some things that aren't, uh, they're nice to have, but not prudent to use in the experience. And now on my mobile device, or in my you know, half and half split screen, I can still see some of the main information and, uh, and operate with it. We're actually going to put this into a desktop view here. And this is something that I would do quite frequently. Whether this notepad is an email that's been sent to me or my notes, I like to have things side by side. So if I want to you know, create a page from a client email, potentially, or create a bunch of pages. I can have the email up or my document up, my Excel spreadsheet, whatever it is that you have or use, and use it to quickly go back and forth between the two uh, in a way that my view is still um, 
working the way it's supposed to and let people access what they need to do. Okay, we're now going to go ahead and we're going to do, uh, we're going to delete something first, okay? So I'm just going to delete the contact page here. So asking us, are you sure you want to do that? We are. So if we notice up here, you know, we, we, a modern app should give users notification and tell them what's happening along the way. There's different ways of doing that, mind you, but it should always be informing the user. There should be no guessing. Uh, so if you look up here in the garbage bin, we have two right now. If you delete pages in real time, you know, that's updating to three. So we're, we're, we're trickling information throughout the view um, so that users you know, can relate things together and that they get instant feedback, uh, you know, not by a message necessarily, but by things changing, counters changing, colors changing, animation, that type of thing. Let's go ahead and um, create a page. So regardless of whether I create this page from within the page manager or from the top level navigation, this create page screen is going to be the same. The exact same screen actually, it's just opening different. Uh, so if we open this from the toolbar, it wouldn't be this size, it would be the size of um, the page and redirect manager. So it would be a little bit bigger for the exact same screen. But we're using little windows here because you know, if you're creating a page or creating something, um, that's your goal. You shouldn't have other things that you can uh, distract you from that goal or impede you from completing it, such as accidentally maybe clicking off to the side and, and the whole screen closing or something like that. So we're trying to really focus the information around the user. You're also going to notice we're not going to go through every tab and things like that, but from using this in production instances over the last uh, little while, you know, originally we, we had the idea of let's have the bare minimum amount of fields to create a page. And in previous versions of Shine, we used to have just that. What, what do you need to create a page? Well, you need a page name and you need a theme. Not really much else. You, you know, that's all you need. But it turns out while you know, that sounds good, really simplify the page creation, it's not realistic. There are other settings that you need to have in some cases, you know, whether or not I want to have it in the site navigation menu, um, a parent page, have some metadata, or if I want it to be a disabled page. Without, uh, and obviously, if you created something with the bare minimum, you could go in after the fact. But when you're in an operational workflow, to do something, to only have to go back in to then do parts of it again is really uh, an interruption. So we're laying out um, what we feel is bare minimum required to build operational pages in DNN. And we've moved the choices. Um, so in similar solutions, I'll just use the persona bars as a, as a contrast, if that's what we're all familiar with or evoke or uh, version 7 and 8 of DNN. Some of these features like a theme and layout would be considered an advanced option, whereas we feel uh, changing the theme is quite frankly a, a pretty general setting that most people would, would do, uh, or changing the navigation menu, or including the site map. So we also include disabled and active as the first thing to change in this view, and that's because a disabled page in DNN is essentially a page you can't even navigate to. It generates a 404. So there's many things that, um, while DNN lets us have, you know, we'll say, 50 options on a page, maybe the disabled page is only five. So when we toggle that behavior, we're actually removing fields in the screen. So to not confuse uh, users, right? The page is disabled. Well, why do you need the theme on the page? You just use that page to um, create a, a navigation hierarchy, for example. Now, that's not to say there isn't a use case where you might want to have a page set up and disable it temporarily and that type of thing. So you can always toggle back and forth between these and change your settings and um, they're, they're going to stay in place. But if you're just creating something at the start, you can disable it and give it a name and save. So let's just move ahead here and we're going to create uh, a couple pages. We're going to do a Southern Fried page. Now I mentioned that a few minutes ago about operational excellence. You know, there's some common use cases when building websites, uh, regardless of platform uh, you're using or, or, or tool, and one is creating many pages at once. So with Shine, we try to give little bits of helpful information along the way. So I'm just going to create this Southern Bride page, and 
with the success message, you can dismiss it, or you can go right back and create another page. And putting focus into the name or the title, um, sort of the name field. So this is where I could come over to my screen now and start to pound out a bunch of pages very, very quickly without really messing with my workflow. So we just created four or five pages in you know, under five, six seconds. Very fast. Mike, very if, you had, if you had some custom settings that you had set on that first page and then you create another and another and another, do those subsequent pages keep the same settings that you had set onto the first one? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so at the current moment, no, they don't. What we're thinking about doing, uh, one of the biggest use cases that we ran into was parent page. So if I'm creating a bunch of pages underneath the parent, currently it will wipe out what was there before. Uh, but we're playing with options so that after you save a page, we'll just do, you know, testing one, two, three, that there potentially could be another option here to, you know, create another um, with retaining some of those options versus a blank page. Uh, so that's mm. a, an absolutely re realistic use case we ran into and are thinking about. For version one, what you see here is, is what will be there where it just wipes out uh, yeah. what's there. Yeah, even if it was a subset, um, to me, I think that the um, buttons that you have inside of the interface to apply the same theme to children or apply the same permissions to children, sure. those are some of the givens that I would have for, I just created this page and I want to create three more. It'd be nice if it kept at least those couple of things. Awesome. No, that's great feedback. Appreciate it, Ryan. So that showed us, and, and down here, here's our pages, right? This, this interface didn't reload. Everything was real time. So as you add a page, it shows up down here. Um, if I want to change the home page, I can come right into this menu here, change the home page, and it's real time. The grid's not fully updating, just nice, fast, fluid. Now, uh, I don't know if there's a little bit of lag on the video or not, but it's on the local machine here, very snappy. It's fast. The uh, couple more things we're just going to show tonight, because we're running a little bit of time here. One thing that I run into a lot is creation of redirects for campaigns that clients might have. And, you know, I uh, worked with uh, one client who created redirects on a daily basis, many of them, tons of them, because there's things like radio campaigns or billboard signs or emails going out. And, you know, if I'm selling a product, I don't want to send you to Mike's website slash products slash, you know, follow campaign slash pretty cool nifty widget. I want to send you to slash pretty cool nifty widget and take you there quickly. So in DNN today, you can create a page and create as a redirect or a link uh, is in some of the terminology. So this here is using that, that same core behavior. We're just laying it out a bit differently. So same type of thing as the page, you can disable redirects or have it active and remove some of the options, whether it's permanent or not, the name of it, parent, and destination type, and a few other options. If you want to get into the permissions, you can do that. If you want to get into schedule publishing, you can do that, but you don't have to. So let's just go ahead and create a redirect here. We're going to call this the Southern Promo Binge. And we're going to send this to a URL. Let's send this to Google. So this could be um, any, any URL, just as standard VNN functionality has it today. And a redirect has been created. Same type of functionality as the pages. You can quickly create many. Let's just get out of there. And there's our redirect down here. And we'll go ahead and make that public, which is just making the page visible to all users. And there we go. We have a redirect. Now, that's redirecting because, you know, our Southern Pride promo page is not ready yet. We're sending them some results. And maybe this page is going to become a permanent page in the future. You know, I could delete it and recreate it, or I could go back into the settings of it, which this is very similar to the page settings I mentioned earlier. And here's, you know, the same screen where we just had with a few other options. Now we can get into the URLs. We can see some audit info and create a page. But if I come up here to this three dots, I can actually convert this back to a page instantaneously because in DNN, behind the scenes, a, page, a redirect is a page. It's all the same thing. So we're able to quickly toggle that behavior, which you can do also in core uh, platform today. We're just doing it a different way. 
so that we're not showing you all the fields that may not pertain to your redirect or all the fields that may not pertain to your page. We're just showing you what you need to get the job done uh, for, that, uh, for that instance. Now we'll save this. And as you can see here, that's now back to a page. All right. Uh, the last thing I'm going to show you is, um, and, and by all means, I'm not showing you all the features that are in Shine, um, just some of the main features. I used the word earlier but a couple times, operational excellence. I've worked in situations where um, clients have had many environments. You know, they're mature. They have production. They've got a dedicated dev. They've got a dedicated QA. Um, you know, they've, they've really thick business processes. They have dedicated UAT, maybe a staging site. Lots of environments. Um, I'm sure all this can relate to working in environments where, you know, we might want to refresh the dev database or refresh QA. Let's refresh QA. Okay, so, you know, your DBA team or your developer refreshes QA and says, here you go, have at it. Loads their new functionality into the site. Can you please test that for me? They're clicking through their experience and, you know, they quickly find that, hey, this isn't working uh, like you said it would. So they go back, talk to the developer after, you know, couple minutes, maybe in some cases, and I've seen this happen many times, a couple hours. Hey, you know, you told me to test this and I can't figure it out. Well, that's because they were using a refreshed copy of production that still had, it's in dev, but has production links in it. So, you know, not everyone flashes up banners on top of the screen and says, hey, you're on the dev site. So you can easily get lost in your experience. So with Shine, um, if you stumble across something that's going to take you out of your website any experience, such as this learn more button here, it tries to load it up. And then it tells you that, hey, you're trying to go to a page that doesn't actually exist on this website. This could be uh, a page that takes you out of the website, a normal link, or it could be, hey, you clicked on an ad link that's trying to take you to production. Um, I don't want you to get lost. So we're letting you know, and you can continue to that page by opening a new window, or you can just quickly go back to where you were and uh, keeps you inside the site. Um, thank you, Ryan. Uh, there's a few other bits of functionality like that scattered throughout Shine for common use cases uh, like, like that. Um, you know, you go for a coffee break, you leave your editing interface open. Well, it's probably going to time out and you're probably going to try and click on things and you're not going to do anything um, or give you an error that you're not logged in. We're going to bring a logging experience directly into Shine so you can log back in without reloading the page, without going elsewhere, and uh, you know, kind of keep you in that operational workflow, similar to how we just did there. Um, so uh, you know, that's uh, that's all we have to show tonight. Uh, but hopefully, that gives you kind of a, a high-level look and feel of you know what Shine is, where we're going with it, our progress to date. Uh, if you've seen it previously, I think you'll you'll notice substantial improvements and uh, iteration through some of the feature sets especially around uh, page management. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, this is not a one, you know, hit it and quit it kind of thing. It's here's a module that we have, uh, we have a roadmap which, uh, you know, takes us another 12 to 16 months of features. Um, we could get, you know, feature crazy and take our time and, and go through all of them, or we could get something out now that uh, we feel polished enough uh, for people to use it on a daily basis, and then quickly iterate through adding new features in the future. Um, so if, thank you uh, much. Yeah, if anyone wants to see some of the other features that weren't gone through tonight, um, we when we post up this uh, meeting, we'll put the link to the previous uh, video so that you can also follow and find that from uh, when Mike was in last year. Um, some of my favorite features um, are for page editors, not for administrators, the people who are using this to edit the site. Uh, there are favorites menus. There are things at their fingertips that they need to do all the time that, you know, come second or third priority when you're a host or an admin, but for an editor, they're right there at your fingertips. Um, the notes and the journaling um, are some of my favorite parts that, from that perspective, are really well thought out. So there's a lot to go take a look at um, in, uh, in those previous walkthroughs. Um, okay, uh, Mike, you didn't say a thing about dates and timelines yet. Um, I told you I was going to pressure you for it. I so didn't what, actually. So uh, that's a good reminder there. So uh, what, what's coming next? Uh, I'll just flip this screen up here uh, for you so we have some notes to look at while I talk. Um, so what's coming next? 
Now, we have a new website coming online with an online demo uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, so imminently coming online, which is going to give you uh, an actual date and um, things like cost and availability, um, potential uh, limitations on, or not limitations, um, I should say minimum requirements for loading shine, that type of thing. So I don't have a date period tonight, Ryan. Um, tonight was more just to have more of a, a casual behind the scenes preview. But within weeks, we have a new website coming which will outline that information, and a version one is coming very soon. Uh, some of the pro some of the features that I mentioned are on that roadmap. Uh, the immediate features that are coming, we're going to have a series of updates called the productivity updates. So mm -hmm. things like drag and, drag and drop functionality for your page tree view, things that you might expect to be there in a modern solution um, throughout different portions of Shine. And also, as we, uh, we didn't show tonight, but a new digital asset manager, Previous versions of Shine had a file and folder management that brought to everyone things like uh, file versioning. Um, mm -hmm. So your core implementation today takes advantage of a file versioning with Shine. Um, so soon after version one comes out, those are the types of uh, features to expect. But once the website comes okay. online, we have very, uh, an accurate roadmap as well. Okay. So then, uh, for sure, by the time we get to Dean and Summit in February, you'll be uh, you'll be uh, talking about it and having some uh, giveaways as door prizes for us to offer out at Summit, right? Uh, yeah, I um, you know I, I've made uh, when you're building a product, we all, we all know how it is, right? It, it can take lots of different turns in the road, um, but uh, absolutely, we're at a, we're at a stage right now where our version one is imminently coming in. And uh, by summit, uh, you know, I don't think we'll be talking about version one. <laughs> All right. Um, actually, shinednn.com, then that's, uh, unless I don't remember from before, that's a new domain for it in general because we've obviously been going to your site, right? Yeah, so shinednn.com. You can go there right now. There's nothing but a, uh, a landing page there at the moment. Placeholder. Okay. Um, but a, a placeholder, but in the coming weeks, uh, and we'll be advertising through Twitter as well, uh, updating people when that site's online with uh, you know some more tangible information that you can take away and uh, you know add into your own roadmap or, or planning uh, if it's something that uh, is interesting uh, for you. Okay, all right. Well, um, I, we've kind of asked questions as we went along through. Um, Mike, uh, you should definitely check out the chat. You've got a lot of. Uh, uh, you know, good jobs and thanks, and that's looking slick and sharp uh, kind of comments in chat. Uh, so uh, you can take a look through those, but I think we kind of talked about out loud any questions that we, we had as we went through it. Um, it's uh, about time for us to wrap up, so let me uh, go ahead and encourage everyone here to say thank you to Mike for presenting for us. Thank you very, very much. That was fantastic, not only for, uh, not only for um, talking about Let's make sure my screen is sharing here. Uh, not only talking about Shine, which, um, you know, I'm very excited about personally, um, but also spending some time talking with us uh, about, the, um, uh, about the customizable action menus uh, out of modules there. Uh, so that was uh, excellent. Um, we started off by saying that uh, not everybody was with us uh, to start off with, but uh, we had Clint uh, join us here towards the end of the evening. Hey, Clint, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? All right. You're doing well. All right. Um, All right. I think a little, I... a little bit late. You work for these Cali-based companies, and it, it gets a little late. Did you um, happen to mention in the intro, Ryan, about the MVP nomination still being live? Why, yes, I did. Um, okay. I was going to ask you if you had anything that uh, you wanted me to mention or bring up, but uh, community-wise... Uh, I uh, described that uh, the home to go to now to find out this information was now the community website. So there was a bit of a tout and a reminder there for that. Um, but yes, uh, we talked about uh, MVPs uh, voting being open, and uh, um, uh, that uh, that's something that we need to remind everybody to get into. Gotcha. Appreciate it. All right. Um, I also uh, will uh, mention, and then I'll kind of finish and, and go back to, uh, the point that we have um, speaker um, sessions. Uh, we have our call for sessions now open for DNN Summit. Um, and we also have registration open for Summit. 
If you um, want to do either of those two things uh, or become a sponsor, those are fantastic things that uh, help us uh, really prepare and move along with our pre preparation for this. Uh, the sooner that we have more people signing up, sponsoring, and putting in their sessions, uh, the better it is for everybody. I'll, uh, I'll kind of pull off my sticker here. I don't know if you saw that, Clint, but I kind of wore a, a ah. palm tree shirt and uh, made nice. myself a Daniel Summit sticker there to, to show off. But um, I'll go ahead and mention... Uh -oh. Mention to everybody again that uh, you know my my time spent with lightsabers is something I do for fun. Kind of looks white on screen more than green. I don't know. Um, it's something that I do for fun, and it's something that I've done for the past several years. And uh, as I get excited about Summit, that's another one of the things that I'll be doing. Is I can we, uh, can we get like a, a palm tree hilt? Hmm. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, I've started tinkering with and playing around with what I'm going to build for this year. So I've got a, I've got a few different ideas, and there may be something new uh, showing up this year in addition to some Saber favorites. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, but uh, if you haven't thought about how you're going to participate and how you're going to get there, uh, 2020 is around the corner, and you can come up with anything you want to do for New Year's. Um, I want you to come up with your plans on getting to – See us at the DNN Summit uh, in February. All right, unless there's anything else to add in, I'll say that is it for our meeting today. Um, our uh, meetings are always the third Thursday of every month, and I have to pull up the calendar to see what our next Thursday is. Uh, August the 15th will be our next uh, DNN Summit meeting. Summit meeting. Uh, uh, Southern Fried Dean and User Group meeting. Uh, so thank you very much, everybody who joined us online and uh, for everyone watching on the uh, replays and, and uh, video later. Uh, come join us on August the 15th, uh, same time, same place online. Thank you, everyone. Bye.